Well, hello everybody. We're going to work on one of my favorite things in Photoshop, especially if you just want to do something to relax or if you want to make some money. There are studios that um, don't do paintings themselves. They do photography, but if uh, they find someone that will turn their photographs into paintings, uh, possibly make a connection there for some extra money depending on you know the quality of of a person's work obviously well in this image if you look at uh, when you download the image of Bryn look at the image size so go to image image size and you'll see this is kind of an oddball size um, I made it as big as I could to put it on the internet so you guys could have something halfway uh, useful quality wise you see down here uh, that it is over three megabytes so and right here uh, what we want to do uh, so we can make this printable if you know if this were a painting that we were wanting to print uh, I would go for something more like a 150 for the resolution and I would also take the height up I, I probably want this the width actually uh, the largest value to be around 20 inches then whenever we need to upscale it normally this would be 300 resolution to start uh, but I had to resize this for the internet so I wanted to work off the same size you guys have so uh, if this were 300 I would immediately bring it down to 150 and change the uh, numbers to be something more like this. Then when you're done with the painting, uh, you can obviously uh, change it however you want. Now remember in painting, the resolution doesn't have to be near as high. You're not looking for all the detail that you would have in a photograph. So 150 probably is going to be just about right. Uh, if you want to turn this into a 20 by 26, or something like that it would be easy to do you know, again you don't have to worry so much about the quality but this uh, according to an artist that does a lot of digital painting uh, the numbers should be in this neighborhood uh, for effective use so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I'm going to do a control 0 command 0 on a Macintosh to fill the screen I need to you know have as much real estate visible as I can have. Okay, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what's the most important thing on the screen? Is it the chain link fence? Is it the flower? Is it the, the little boy? Is it the cap? Is it the bench? And so forth. Well, it's pretty obvious in this image that it's the little boy. Uh, I see a lot of artwork and uh, primarily digital artwork where they come up to the edges of the main subject and they have a little trouble getting in close uh, the strokes tend to be rounded uh, instead of you know coming in like it's a natural paint uh, sometimes there's a little ghosting around the edge because they're afraid to get to the face and so forth so we're going to protect um, this young man so he doesn't get all smeared and glommed up uh, so the first thing we do is turn on the quick selection tool and we're just going to make a general selection around him to protect him. So we, we get all of these areas that we can, get some hair there, not too much. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option on a Mac and get this in here and that looks pretty good a little bit right there on the arm I don't want that so I'll hold down the alt option on a Mac get that like that and it looks pretty good so a little bit right there at the hair that I want up there under the ball cap brim and click on refine edge so the edges don't look too terrible right here uh, we're going to move this over to white we have some green coming in right here 
I'm going to make that bigger holding down the control and the space bar command space bar on a Mac to magnify this area I'm going to click a few times to make that bigger and I'm going to go ahead make my brush bigger with the right bracket key and I'm just going to click right in here try to get some of that fence gone everything else looks pretty good took a little bit more away than I wanted to control Z to undo that we've got some jaggedy edges so let's let's turn on the smart radius and move that up a little bit now we've smoothed that out quite a bit and let's go down to adjust edge I'm going to smooth that just a little bit more and I'm going to shift the edge a little bit to the right because if you look I'm sorry about that if you um, look at the edge right up here you notice there's a little contamination so what I'm going to do is shift the edge right here to the left until that goes away you don't want it to go any further than it has to now you've got some edges here that are kind of disappearing that's not to worry about I'm going to click on the de decontamination run it up just a little bit and I'm going to spacebar, holding down the spacebar, moving it around, making sure my edges are okay. And I want to go here and make sure new layer with layer mask is there and click OK. So now you see here's our layer mask. Now if we zoom in just a little bit, see this area around his face that's kind of dotted? don't know why it's like that but um, what we can do is turn on a regular paintbrush and we want to paint inside this mask so we can just go along here make sure white is turned on over here in the bottom of the tools palette space bar to move it up further Let's move through here a little bit and bring some of the hair that's in there back out. Now I'm going to switch to black over here by pressing X and get rid of some of that greenish stuff. And we'll fix this in a little bit. Switch back with X and fill that in around the cap. I'm watching our edges all the way around. So we've got some jaggedy stuff going on up here. And if we want to get rid of that, press X again. Press X again to go back down here and fill that in. Looking pretty good. X, because we got too much green. X again, so we can go back to painting. it's not hard if we want to do a good job we have to take our time you see some of this is kinda of gone bring that right back in and in here there's some hair there that we do want there's some stuff that we don't so let's just do control Z there and press X so blacks on top and we're going to paint some of that back out of there because some of that's chain link fence and some of it's hair. No, that's not hair right up in there. There's hair right in there and we don't really need that. We're going to make some hair with our brushes, but we don't need that. All right, <clears throat> let's bring back the collar. So I press X which allows us to see back through that layer right here to see the good layer underneath that's uh, see all that materials there so we go on down making sure everything's okay
everything looks pretty good there a little bit there that's problematic remember you all you got to do is uh, if you see things are going the wrong direction just press X and you'll switch colors because you may be painting with the wrong color and things kind of go south and a little bit right there needs to come back let's see how much press X again to get rid of that green okay I think we're in good shape control or command zero to bring him up all right now we can turn the other image back on and it looks just like it did you can't tell any difference if you turn that eyeball off now what we're gonna do to play things safe is do a control J on this layer one this is the background I'm just gonna put that in there and click somewhere and I'm gonna do a control J and now we've got a background copy and that's the one that we want to work off of so right now if I begin painting we can turn that off and we want it, the background copy we can just paint layer we'll just do that this is what we made the selection on and if we turn these off punch that on you see we've got a nice copy of Bren right there we're gonna turn that off and just paint on this layer now what we want to do is sample as we paint from the area same area that we're painting in otherwise we don't want to just smear 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 from one spot and get rid of this chain link fence because it is very distracting it's not something that you would find in a, a painting, not not a chain link fence like this. Um, so we can go to our paintbrush right here, click and hold that down with the left mouse button, and go to Mixer Brush Tool. Now, the Mixer Brush is totally different from anything else in Photoshop as far as brushes go notice up here it it probably will say custom when you first open it up this uh, actually lets you paint dry and various degrees of dryness starting to get wet down to wet and very wet now what that means is if you're painting dry you're painting with the color that's up here and I just turned that on uh, this is to load the brush with you know, each stroke this is to clean the brush after each stroke so if those are not highlighted then it's not going to load the brush each time and it's not going to clean the brush each time the reason why you would clean the brush is if your colors are getting contaminated otherwise if you're uh, painting somewhere else you've been painting over here in the green and then you paint in the white and you're still getting green in it you want to clean your brush and it gets rid of that other color all right right now if we paint you see we're painting uh, dry and we're painting with the color that's in the color picker I'm gonna do a control Z I can load my brush each time it's not really changing obviously and and you see if it's dry the wetness is down to zero if I go down to moist you see the wetness is at 10 percent and so forth as we go down now it's the wet is 50 percent so you can't you can't even see that it's dropping in a paint all right let's do a few control Z's control alt Z to get rid of some of that so if I go to wet and I'm going to clean my brush uh, in wet it means you've turned your canvas wet let me show you let's zoom in a little bit I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger see how I'm smearing the paint that's already there if my paint 
my canvas is dry and I reload it's painting with this color turn off reload and we're not getting anything our color went away so this is kind of an indicator it should show you if you're painting uh, with the color or not again and dry your canvas isn't wet but once it's wet then it's painting with the colors in your photograph okay let me do some control alt z's here before i get too far and can't undo all right now we are painting on the right layer the paint layer and i'm going to show you a little bit as we go along i want to basically uh, paint away this chain link fence using the color that is you see through the fence so I'm going to leave it on wet and I don't really need to clean the brush after each stroke but I'm just going to use the paint or the uh, colors from the area where my brush is so what it that entails is that I click and paint just a little bit and I click again and paint just a little bit click paint click paint click here and paint so what you're doing let's let's actually reload the brush after each row what what I'm doing when I let off the mouse and click again I'm, I'm reloading or painting from that new place so to speak now if I click on the brush head up here this is my one of my favorite all-time brushes actually let me close that and go over here to the brush or you can go up to window down to brush right here is the fan brush that I'm using uh, and I really really like these different fan brushes that are in here um, I was thinking there was another one there handy but these are the special brushes for painting and drawing right in here and you can see in this preview window how the brush stroke looks so if I go over here and paint now if I want to have less bristles let me make that bigger so you can see what's happening here see what's going on lots of bristles but they're much thicker so change the stiffness and you actually push more paint with the, with each stroke it's not a good idea to just do that all at once uh, because it's really going to show in your image but this is here for you to experiment that's what this is all about you can change the length of the stroke with the brush and let's see uh, the thickness the length the bristles uh, if we click on the where it says round fan you can also change it to any of these round blunt and all of these too uh, let's do flat blunt you see the brush change and you can also change the bristles on it so lots of bristles and it, it really uh, if you s just swipe it back and forth or brush back and forth it really smooths things out okay I'm gonna undo several of these little deals not all of them and so you get the idea now uh, here's a totally different uh, this is a flat blunt and you see what it looks like on the the painting let's go up here so you can see it and it's more of a smoothing you don't see the bristles 
so much. You can see the pattern that's right here, and you can control the spacing. Again, you can control the numbers of bristles, the length, and all of these will have a different effect. You can see that's kind of mottled looking. So this is the deal. You, you come in here and you just experiment with the different brushes till you find those things that you really like. Here's one that's really strong on uh, smearing. Might be good uh, for a lot of different things. And this one, it's not going to do as much as we would like because we want to soften this and see some bristle strokes in here. You see that the there aren't really any separations here in the bristles. The, the brush just gets thicker or thinner. And that's what we what we need to do is go back again to the fan and it's not too late to use the fan to fix this area up. Now see this was a darker area here and I'm clicking and dragging and, and re-clicking. I'm not just painting and going on and on and on. See that's just gonna that's just gonna fill it with that one color. You gotta click, smear, click, smear, uh, smear here, click, let go, click again and start smearing, click and smear a little bit, click over here and smear. So you're you're grabbing new colors as you let go of your mouse and and smear. Paint, I should say. Not we're not smearing. So again, we can make some more separation between our brush. Uh, we can do a little angling of the brush, the thickness. Obviously, we're going to lay down a lot of paint when we change the thickness that much. Let's really get that back down there. So click, paint a little bit, click again paint. Now the trick is, I'm going to do a control minus. The trick is we don't want, I'm going to make my brush bigger, we don't want to see uh, the chain link fence, but we do want to see the colors or the tonal changes that are out there through the fence. Now the reason why we made a copy of Bryn is this. And we're going to make sure that sample all layers is unchecked. So, so we smear and really get rid of this fence. So we don't want the brush strokes to, to mess us up. And that's why we copied Bryn like we did. And I'm going to show you in just a second what good that did. Now if I turn this layer that just has Bren on it, you see we painted right up against it. And we're still on this layer, the paint layer. And I can still keep painting and not hurt Bren. Because we don't want, we're going to paint Brennan, but we don't want to paint him with the green. Alright, that's the big deal. So we don't want to contaminate. So continue to paint, picking up and dropping. And notice I'm not having to do anything up here right now. I can make it very wet and all that stuff. I can change the wetness up here. I, I can control how much it loads of the paint and all that stuff. But right now, we're good to go. We just <clears throat> keep going and fill this in and not worry about all those dials and numbers and stuff yet. So I'm going to make take advantage of that white and push it around a little bit because I still want that in the image. I don't want that 
to totally go away. And you'll see, because we get so much green in there, we want the tonal changes. It makes the background more interesting to have a variety of colors. And we don't want it to be in a pattern like this chain link fence is basically giving us a pattern. Now make sure as you work on the image that you're using the same controls up here that I am. So your results are going to be very, very similar to what I have. You've got to take your time and get rid of that chain link fence. Do not rush. And I'm going to pause the recording while I do the rest of the chain link fence. Okay, I've pretty well got this right side painted and I will admit I went into my brushes and I changed the thickness just a little bitty bit. So I'm dropping a lot more paint in. Now I wanted to show you I'm painting over the dandelion. Getting right up to the face. And because Bren's on his own separate layer we don't have to worry too much about that. Now the dandelion is going to come back to life in a few minutes. But uh, I wanted to show you that got rid of that and pretty well have my colors taken care of down here. Smooth that out a little bit. And I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of it. Now there's a little, <clears throat> there's a, excuse me, there's a little bit of brown over here in this area and I decided I was going to use that some more. So I kind of spread that out a little bit. Bring some of that brown up. Just to give it some different color in the image. So I pretty well got it color, uh, covered. And uh, we want some nice brush strokes in there. So if you don't, uh, if you smooth it out too much, try to drag those thick brush br bristles uh, into the image. And you don't want any of it to look unpainted. That would really mess things up as well. So now we need to start on Bren. Now he's on this layer, obviously. And what we're going to do is make a copy. Let's just go ahead and we've we've got our mask fixed. We don't need it anymore. So I'm going to right click on it and say apply the layer mask. So now he's on his own layer. I'm going to make a copy of him. Do a control J. And I'm going to uh, double click this one and say paint Bryn. So this is just our good copy, this will be the one that we're going to paint on. Uh, again, we go and we've got to simplify the image. Now notice there are some areas out here when we make it bigger that, uh, sorry about that, we need to paint on the right layer and just bring that in a little bit more. Now, don't have to worry about Bren's hair. We're going to bring in some new hair as we do this. Add to it. So we kind of get rid of some of those areas that didn't fill in just exactly right. Okay, I'm happy. Now, go up to the paint brin layer with the same brush or whatever brush you want to use. And I'm going to just start painting. We can't have details. I mean, just can't do it. This cardinal, if we leave the cardinal like that, it's not going to look like a painting. It's going to look like a photograph. So first of all, tackle the dark areas, like this shadow here, shadows here. And this is not an exact science, so you just Get some of that dark there, some of this here. And what I'm doing is I just click and paint a little bit, let go. Click, paint, let go. Click, painting, let go. And I'm just clicking and dragging a little bit. Click, 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 click. Just I'm just doing that so you know 
exactly what I'm doing. Don't worry about little smears like that. And I'm going to paint from the white area. White area here. Here. Again, don't worry about the paint getting down there. If you look at a painting, you're going to see there are areas that the brush goes too far down something. Now, left bracket, I need to make my brush smaller. Trying to go with the contours. And make it a little bit bigger, right bracket. Clicking and dragging. Click, 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 drag, drag, drag. Is all I'm doing there. All right, let's tackle the cardinal here. I'm double. I'm just holding down the control key and the space bar and clicking. That'd be command space bar on a Mac. Left bracket key. Get down in here and slap and smear. This is what my favorite artist, digital artist, calls this. Now, just uh, start brushing this. It will translate, trust me. Now if I zoom out, still looks like a cardinal, right? All right, let's get in here. We got to address these, and I'm just going to, I can paint over them. I know one's right in here, one's here, and I'm just going to go up, select a regular brush, and I'm going to go down to the color picker, get a black, and I'm just going to paint a little bit right in there and then go back to my mixer brush and just smear that a little bit and let's go ahead and fix this a little bit better now to the bill Kind of go with the bill here. Straight back. And we can add, uh, let's say we want to add a little uh, white. I'm going to do it with, with this on. And we want dry. So let me make that smaller. And we We'll put a little highlight up there. That's a little bit strong. Control Z. Let's take the flow down. Now, let's go back to wet. And we won't load that. We're just going to smear this. And we've got to be on the right brush. We are on the right brush. So I needed to be on wet. I put it on very wet. I'll just bring that in a little bit. And let's mix it up. Bring in some of the other colors so we can Tone that white down a little bit. Now let's back out. And let's move that back up here. Subdue so it a little bit more. And we'll paint. Oops. Let's need to make sure we don't get any of that. So I've painted over just a little bit into the image. So what I can do is turn sample all layers on. And then I can 
brush that back again. All right, let's go back out. Again, we can subdue that white even more. Uh, that's the beauty of painting with the palette that just lets you do whatever you want to do. All right, let's move down to the hair. Now I'm going to make my brush bigger and just do a sample stroke here. I remember I'm sampling all layers. I don't have to do that anymore. I did it for that and that's fine. Now I click and drag. Now that's pretty harsh. It's pretty thick. So Control alt z to get rid of that. And I'm going to go back up to my brushes and I'm going to make sure that I'm not dropping a lot of paint. Let's just go ahead and take that back to 1%. Let's, uh, let's thin the bristles out just a little bit. And now let's see what we get. Click up here and turn that off. Yeah. You can also push up as well as drag down. Now we're getting a lot of uh, darkness uh, in there. Let me enlarge this and let's pull down light. Push that up, pull it down. Getting too much dark there. And it has to look like it's, you know, it's really coming out of there. Again, we've got to go with the colors that are there. And we're going to add some colors, too. We're going to add some highlights in this. We've got that fine hair coming over from here. We'll add some more to that. And we've got some of this hair coming from here. We'll add to that. Let's bring that out a little bit. Only want that light hair coming out. Take it back in, bring it back out, and smear that. All right. Let's zoom back out, see what we got there. All right, let's go ahead and bring some more down. Now you saw what I did earlier. If we want to add more uh, highlights to this, we're going to go up and put some paint in. So let's just drag some of this down first and push some of it up down and up and again this is no concern when we go too far we can just brush that back over Ooh. crooked lines coming out of the hair don't really add much And I advise you trying to go with the grain so it doesn't look unnatural. So we haven't looked and we haven't done a bad job there, but if we want to add some highlights in here in the hair, again we can go up here to the color and just move our mouse outside this and say we want to put maybe some more of that color in. So we click OK and you see what that color looks like. And then we 
want to go to a dry brush and when we paint you see what it looks like is that exact color so we can actually bring let's just make it a little bit small that's pretty heavy so let me so you can see my numbers I changed my flow the load and I made it a 12% wet so that that lets me paint in however much I want so we remember we're painting with with that lighter color right now just putting some fine hair over in here lightening that up just a little bit now let's change this wetness back to one zero percent and let's come in here and we'll just put some hair coming out of here and let's just put a little bit more and let's go back and make this thing dry I mean sorry wet and quit loading the paint and let's go ahead and just paint that hair back away that's coming through and again uh, we can change the flow cover that over a little quicker And yes, we have to paint uh, all the areas on the face, otherwise it looks pretty funny. Now remember, we can make this uh, smooth. In this case, I'm not so sure that seeing the brush strokes a little bit doesn't help. Uh, it might help sell it a little bit better. So we just kind of blend the strokes in. I'm just clicking and drag a little bit, let go. Click and drag, let go. Same thing over here. Now we really have to simplify the shirt. I'm just clicking and dragging back and forth. Every time I go this way, I let go back and forth. Just letting that all come together. And remember, we can change the thickness of the brush bristles. Oops. We need to turn the sample all layers back on so we can actually paint with the green too. All right. Again, we have some dark areas here. Let's just smooth those first to really bring out those kinds of accents to, to show the creases and wrinkles, otherwise giving the shirt uh, some texture, some depth. And here's a good bunch of darker area. Make my brush bigger and really get in there and accentuate these things. Can drag some of that down in here to give it some color in there where it's kind of washed out. Remember, if if we just paint this perfectly then it's going to look like a photograph and that sometimes that's really hard to manage because we're dealing like right now I have this really enlarged to work on it right and make this smaller with a left bracket key bigger again click and smear
So then when I zoom out, can we still tell it's a painting? That's the trick. So we got to kind of keep an eye on that to make sure that it still looks like a painting after we're done. You see there's a pattern in this shirt. You got to make sure you get that all smoothed out. Otherwise, that's a dead giveaway. You would never see that particular color or pattern, sorry, in a painting. So you have to simplify, simplify, simplify. And I'm going to pause this until I've got the shirt filled in. Okay, you see that I've got most of this painted in okay. I want to actually add some accents to the shadows that make them a little harder. So I'm going to go over to the burn tool and my tool palette and I'm just going to darken some of these shadows just to, to build a little more contrast. A little bit darker. Which builds a little bit more depth. Let's bring that out. Okay, now we need to tackle the, the hands and arm. Again, I'm going to use the same brush, but I probably need to make it smaller, right? Now we've got a lot of dark area here. I'm going to push that around a little bit. I'm actually going to go in and um, let's just I don't really want to stiffen it. There. Let's see what we can do now. So it really brought out the, the bristle strokes. That's okay. You see, we don't have a lot of tonal changes in there. So it's kind of hard to sell the painting. Let's back out and see what that looks like. So, we need to go in and change that a bit. Let's get the bristles up. That looks fine. And let's see if we can't do some changes here that will show. That's the trick is can we make that actually show and we'll probably put um, some highlights in here a little bit. Let's go up here and let's sample that and then go with a a lot lighter pink. Let's go to dry. Put some lighter on top of the fingers. Let's put some right up here to make that a little bit lighter. And let's go back and turn that off. Get back to wet and blend that in a little bit. And if you just smear it, just keep your mouse down and move your mouse around in the color a little bit. It helps that go away. Let's zoom out a little bit. See, it's hard to see that little, little bit of uh, area here. Now when we make it uh, a 
a true 19 inch print or 16 by 20 or something like that, then that's going to show uh, a heck of a lot more. Just love how some of these uh, brushes will blend and make things look so cool. So you can really change uh, how that's going to look and be a lot more drastic than I was with with the uh, textures and the face and hands and so forth. Let's uh, go get that dandelion because that's really, I'm going to turn those off real quick and get back down here uh, to the background. And I'm going to just take my lasso tool and I'm going to grab this dandelion although it's not the prettiest in the world I don't want to take the time to recreate it so I'm going to do a copy control C go back up here to the top I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to do a control V let's see let's do it actually, actually let's go down here to that layer and let's do a control J just put that on there and then we'll take that up here to the top we don't need that anymore and now got our little guy got the dandelion up here I need the paint layer turned on so now we've got the dandelion on here with him and now it's time to really paint the dandelion a little bit so let's go back to our paint brush paint brush I'm going to uh, basically I'm just going to sample his shirt uh, let's try sampling off here and let's load up a little bit of that color change that to dry So I really want this puffy thing to show and what better brush to use to make something look puffy. Just kind of building some layers of that up. Clicking and dragging. Do a control Z here a couple of times because I went a little too far. Let's back up control zero or command zero on a Mac and we've created our own dandelion so this is kind of a fast and crazy uh, tutorial on how to do this I would finish it up by signing it so I would just put a new layer on here just click the new layer icon and signature and I will click on my tablet now because it's on its own layer I can transform it once I'm done let me just turn on uh, a more regular brush uh, let's do small and let's see what that looks like and I need to have white on top okay so that's gonna be pretty good let me magnify that area a little bit. I can sign it in here anywhere I want to. And then I'm going to control T that. Hold down my shift key. Control zero and there we go. Move that down just a little bit maybe or over here. And yes, that's how I sign stuff. Let me make that bigger so you can see. Now that's without any practice. I haven't picked up that pen in a while, but it's a little graph fire uh, tablet from Wacom, uh, many, many years old, but it comes in handy. I like to fade my signature so it doesn't uh, exactly blow things away. 
and I can also save that signature. Uh, I can save this image with its layer and drag the signature out and drop it on another image if I want to. So it's it's always handy. Sometimes I just name a file signature or an image signature so I know it's got it in there. I could say Bryn with signature and I can drag and drop that signature into any file I want to. All right, that wraps it up. I hope you have some fun with this. Uh, it can be, and very uh, soothing as well. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.